Yo, what's going on bike people of the internet? Back with another video for you. This time we're looking at a 1997 Kona Syndicate that I bought. And as you can see, it has been heavily modified in the period. So yeah, there's very little standard left over this bike. But I'll go into the details of what I think the history is as we fly through the bike. Um, as you can see, the grips are pretty much melting. This was pretty horrible to ride back and I'm Disappointed I didn't bring gloves because I had that black tar stuff all over my hands. Um, avid speed dial brake levers, um, they're kind of cool. We've got these club roots go fast bars that have faded quite badly, but I kind of like these bars with that brace. Uh, and you can see that side is utterly disgusting. We have an old school Magura HS33 here that doesn't work at all, so I'm assuming it's completely dry and out of fluid. Um, lots of accessories and gubbins on the bars. Yeah, it's not looking great. And we've got STX RC shifters, I think. We've got nine speed on this bike. I think this is a standard stem. It's got a big chunky Cane Creek heads there. I don't understand why it's so big. It's pretty chunky. Uh, we've got lots of like tarnishing on the frame. I think if I remember his frame's right, it comes in a satin blue anyhow. Uh, moving on to this masterpiece down here, we have some paste forks and they're sort of carbon fiber and gold nitride glorious and the decals kind of failed a bit there which is a bit annoying but we should be able to sort that out at the rear we have a relatively modern looking v-brake so maybe this bike was uh, updated or put back onto use at some point in time because that looks like a much more modern v-brake front wheel check out those spokes they're like a rainbow fade on them now i've had a quick look into this and i think these are titanium spokes which is not the ideal spoke material and one thing you'll notice if you look really clear closely is we're missing one spoke so it'd be a giant pain in the butt to replace i think um front hub is a hope tie glide and <laughs> this this wheel is unbelievably light now i've got it off an array of rims you can see the missing spoke there but yeah it's a pretty cool piece of kit i think moving back down the frame here as you can see the paintwork isn't great but it's not awful either it's kind of hard uh, badly tarnished uh, it's got lots of scratches and nicks in it and that cable's been zip tied so maybe we can sort it out not 100 percent sure at this stage it's going to be a resto for sure um seat post i think this might be a standard seat post it's nothing special not particularly nice set of italia red saddle there here's the hs33 brake it's faded badly moving down i thought we might have a really cool chain set on this bike but i think it's the actual original drive side chain set i thought it might have been a white industry from the pictures but it's got some nice upgraded anodized uh, chain rings on there which would be pretty cool only problem is the non-drive side is just a cheapo crank it's it's like they've broken the crank at some point in time and had put a cheap replacement on but those anodized cool chain rings are cool i think uh yeah baby xtr at the back can't be that's my favorite rear mech ever it's just absolutely awesome uh yeah just the coolest looking rear mech ever made i think that that's definitely a keeper uh let's have a look around the bike yeah xtr mega nine speed yeah that's definitely uh, a fit for reuse for sure as you can see the rear wheel there is just some cheapy m mxt mxr is i think it's a halfords brand um so it's not matching the front at all or mx yeah rubbish panoracial trail blast the tire at the rear is completely disintegrating so that can go in the bin um yeah overall it's not in good shape but this is one thing i didn't notice when i was looking at the bike the non-drive side seat stay has been dinked and dented quite bad you can just about make out so i'm not sure if it's recoverable at this stage anyhow we're going to pull it apart assess it maybe try bending the frame back in, in a later video but i paid 120 pounds for this bike so it wasn't particularly cheap but it's got some nice parts i want on it and even if it can't be saved i think there's value of at least 120 pounds in the parts so that's the way i see it um I took a risk. Now normally I'd start a tear down on the bottom bracket and crank area, but as every time I touch this bike I get grip deposits on my hand, I want to remove the grips first so I can maneuver the bike around without getting gunk all over my hands. So yeah, let's start by taking out these bar end plugs. Um, these are x white ones, they're actually pretty nice I think, so maybe there's a reuse option for these in the future if they clean up okay. They're always going to be a bit scratched, but 
uh, it's an old bike part by a non-existent brand anyhow. Uh, X Lite turned into Muck Off. Uh, is it Dada in a No? Muck Off was an X Lite product. Um, so yeah, trying to take these grips off. I thought they might be a bit hard on the bar, so I'm using a really blunt, knackered old screwdriver here and a bit of WD-40 to try to slide them off the bars. But as I sort of leave around, the, the grip snaps in half and they can peel off. So it actually was pretty easy to remove the grips in the end. They just kind of self-destruct themselves off the bars. So yeah, that was an easy score compared to some of the fights you get into. Uh, moving on to the other side, and here you can see how like how bad the grip is. I literally the black stuff wore off onto my hands into that blue layer, but the grips come off easy. Just going to check the chain here, and surprisingly, the chain isn't worn out, which is nice for a change. I'm not sure if it's recoverable though, so the actual chain hasn't stretched too badly. But if we zoom in next on the next clip, you can see it's quite badly rusted and tarnished. So maybe it's recoverable, maybe it's not. Maybe this is going to be a 9 speed build, maybe I'll just use it for spare parts. What would you do? Would you try to recover this chain or would you just go for a new chain and just, you know, chains aren't particularly expensive these days. I actually bought some for like 3 99 the other day from Wiggle, so new chains are relatively affordable. So let's start prop strip down proper and get the chain removed from the, the bike. One thing of note is this chain was by Sax, and Sax got bought by SRAM, so all SRAM chains are now Sax chains, so it's got a SRAM chain on this bike effectively. So with the grips off and not melting on my hands anymore, I'm going to put the bike on the ground because I want to remove the pedals and bottom bracket, and lately both these things have been fighting me really badly, so um, if you put the bike on the ground you're no longer stressing out the seat post, you can just lean against the wheels and the wheels can cope with that pressure a lot more than the seat post can and you get a much more rigid, rigid sort of interaction with the bike so this is me trying to remove the pedals and this pedal was properly stuck um, I was leaning on to all my body weight and I'm a bit of a fat old git so yeah I, it wouldn't go um, so I thought I'd break out the WD-40 and give that a bit of a penetrating oil give it half an hour to let it sort of work itself in and try again try to uh, remove the pedals and it, it really didn't work <laughs> um, I have no luck with pedals and bottom brackets at the moment so yeah this is me sort of leaning on it with all my body weight again I'm worried that I'm gonna put the chain rings through my knuckles which isn't a good look so I decided to get the heat gun out once the WD-40 had evaporated and give it a good um, blast with the heat gun and this is me attempting to undo it yet again and no it's still not going um, it was properly on there solidly. Actually, the, the spanner started to get dented where I was leaning onto it, so it's not a particularly expensive spanner, but still, <laughs> that's how much I was leaning on it. So again, what I did, I got the heat gun out, I knew the spanner was ruined, and I decided to use a mallet against the spanner. And this is something I would advise against generally. This is bad advice. Do not do it this way. Um, but it, it worked. <laughs> It is a way of getting a pedal off, but I wouldn't recommend it. So in total, that was a good couple of hours just trying to remove one pedal. So <laughs> it's a good victory for me there. Onto the non-drive side, and that does come off easy. So unfortunately, that one was much easier. There's much less of a story there. So that come off just, just like a normal pedal. Moving on to the chain set, I'm going to remove that next. It's just a normal square taper type, hopefully under here, I think, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, it looks like a square taper. What I'm doing there is just checking for if there's any washers in there, because if you put the crank extraction tool in there with a washer and try pulling against the washer, you're not going to pull the cranks off. Um, so yes, me just making sure that the extractor's home on the cranks there. Then I just wind the extraction part in. And the crank popped off pretty easy, to be fair, so there's no extra drama so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this crank set yet um, like I don't like the fact I've got an odd set but I quite like those chain rings so maybe there's a future for the chain rings on a different project that's the way I'm thinking of this at the moment moving on to the non-drive side next and it's a similar situation pop the little cover off here uh, check inside for washers no washers on this and then put the crank extractor in Make sure it's wound home really nice and tight so you've definitely got like a real positive engagement on the threads on the crank there. And wind the extractor into the, the bottom bracket. 
and yeah, uh, pop it off. And this one is a little tight, but nothing to worry about too much. And I lost my spanner because I'm getting too enthusiastic. Um, yeah, it popped off no problems. But like I say, mate, I'm not really sure what to do with this chain set. Um, maybe I'll do it like a charity bike build and the oddness is the lost out of my spare parts bin that way. The bottom bracket itself actually felt pretty good despite looking super crusty. So there's a little win there. So we'll try pulling it out next. And um, yeah, that side came out fine. No issues. The plastic side is never really an issue. This is where the metal and metal interacts on the on the drive side you usually get the problems. But for a change, for the <laughs> last couple of bikes, I've had the right fights with the bottom bracket. This one come out easy. Um, it's pretty rusty on the inside. So it's obviously been used quite a lot and had water and muck thrown down the seat tube. But yeah, it, it's all good. Let's chop the cables next for the bike. I always like chopping cables. It feels like such a definitive, I'm tearing this bike down move. Um, as you can see, what I'm trying to do is here is chop the little cable ties holding the hydraulic hose in for the the Nagura rear brake. I'm not 100% sure if it's a HS33, like yes, it's an early HS33s, or is it the sort of HS11 or 22? I, I, I thought they only did the HS33s in that fluoro yellow, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. The little boot from the XTR rear mech there, the dust cover, I think that's probably too far gone, so I went in the bin. And then, yeah, I removed the rear mech, and I, I've already got sort of a planner in mind for this rear mech. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to end up on this bike, but um, yeah, it's so cool to have. I just think this old school XTR stuff is just the best bike stuff I've ever built. It is super classy. This is an M952 spec one. It's a nice speed. So, with the drivetrain off, we can remove the rear wheel. There's nothing special about this rear wheel, but the cassette was quite nice. And I looked up the part number later on because it looks like quite wasted away and spidery. And there's an XT level cassette, so that's a nice little Brucey bonus hiding there. Onto the forks next, so we need to pop the V brakes off um, and pop the front wheel out. This front wheel is insanely light. Uh, what I'll try to do is uh, in the next video, I'll try to weigh this front wheel just to demonstrate how light it is because it's absolutely insanely light. I worry that I'm too heavy for that front wheel. <laughs> I should imagine with those tie floats, tie spokes and little tiny tie hub is going to be super flexy but um, yeah it felt lighter than my road bike front wheel which is saying something I think the XT front mech come off fine no problems and there's a bit of gunk and dirt hiding underneath them. no horrors which is nice to nice to see for a change sometimes where the front mech interacts with the bike frame it can sort of mar up the frame and leave rusty patches I think there's some patches where it's worn through the paint there but there's nothing too extreme. It's a little montage -y bit of taking the front brakes off of uh, the forks. Um, I think these front brakes are much newer, like maybe 10 years old. To me, it feels like this bike has was like a, someone's pride and joy in the like late 90s. Got parked up for a bit, used, realized some stuff was broken, and then like rehashed onto the road. That's the way it feels like. Like I should imagine it would have a, a Magura front brake at some point in time, but it was too far gone, I would have thought. So just put a newish Shimano one on there, just to get it back on the road. And there's some bits like that. That's what I think has happened to the rear wheel as well, because that's a sort of basic budget rear wheel. So I think, yeah, it was used, parked up for a long time. Someone tried to restore it, but restored it on the super cheap from maybe a bike shop did it. And they just used like the basic spec components just to get it back up and running, which probably was about maybe a hundred quid's worth of stuff I would have thought. So with the brakes removed, the bars removed and all those accessory mounts in the bin you can pop the forks off and see where the state the headset's in. Um, and actually I don't think it's too bad. So this Cane Creek C2 is a bit of a, a bit of a beastie headset but I think it's because it has a big sealed bearing in the top there. I'm not quite sure of the logic but behind it all but it's a sealed bearing which was nice to see for a change. With the headset looking decent, there's only one thing left to do with this strip down is to have a look at this chain stay. So there's a there's a horrible like lizard skins uh, chain guard on there. But it's not horrible, it's just dirty, dusty and horrible looking. It's probably been quite effective throughout the years. And there's loads of masking tape on here or electrical tape. So let's pull that off and see the state underneath. And um, you, you know what? It's actually kind of mint under there for a change. <laughs> so here's a little like 
um, sped up clip of uh, me doing out of time lapse because it took quite a while to sort of get through it. And underneath there's like a mint Kona, Kona chainstay protector so that was actually nice to see. And this Sally Italia saddle has to go as well, it doesn't quite suit the frame. So I just decided to give a frame a bit of a wash down with some car wash just to see what it looked like. And I actually thought, and it looks even better in video, that it come up really nicely. There's lots of scratches and like exposed metal on the bike that we need to sort out, but yeah, it actually cleaned up really nicely I thought and like so little wash made a real big difference I felt. So let's have a fly around this naked frame and I'll show you what's my sort of concerns with going any further and building this up. So let's have a look at the paint condition overall. So we've got a couple of scratches and stuff on the head tube. There's like this tarry spot there that needs to be cleaned up. There's some like quite bad scratches on the top tube here so they need to be touched in and de-rusted and generally sorted out to make it look nice. There's quite a lot of scratching and marring there that needs to be polished out but it's a satin frame so it might not polish particularly easily or it might go shiny blue which is really what the finish we're looking for. Uh, all the decals on the frame are pretty nice still, they're not been scratched up too bad so that's a sort of good point. Uh, bottom bracket is dirty in there but it all seems to be fine when I took the bottom bracket out. Down tube's okay, the Kona logo is pretty scratched up and I'm not quite sure how you get chips there on the bicycle, that's a bit confusing for myself. Um, yeah so like the front triangle's not too bad. Uh, bottom bracket's not too bad. Chainstay is actually kind of good. It's got a lot of scratches on the underneath, but like you can't really see those, so I'm happy to ignore those. Uh, moving on to the dropouts, pretty depainted and scratched up, but it's got a nice little cone of branding there. Up the seat stay is pretty good until we get to the top. There's a couple of pretty bad scratches up here and need touching in. No mega disasters though. So yeah, it's all not too bad. These bolts can be sort of de-rusted and sorted out. But moving on to the flip side of the frame and onto the dropouts, you can see where the problem is. First off, you can see there's a dent just above it. We'll move on to that in a tick. On the drive side, there's a bit of a gouge out of the frame in this point here. Uh, just a little one. I'm not sure if that's okay to run like that. I'm assuming like where that socket's into the tube, there's loads of thick brazing, so it shouldn't be a problem. But the biggest concern is the dent in the seat tube, seat tube? the uh, seat stay on the non-drive side there. So if I have a look at this side, it's perfectly straight. I can get a ruler and place it on the tube there. And as you can see, it's pretty much dead parallel to the ruler. So it's a straight edge. If we move it onto the seat stay, there's a significant sort of dinky dent into the into the tube, probably five, six millimeters deep. So yeah, it's been pressed in quite significantly. How you would do this in real life, I don't know. Maybe you got dropped into a rock at great speed or SPD crash or something like that. Or maybe it just got hit by a sledgehammer in a garage out of frustration. Who knows? So the rest of the frame is decent, I would say. It's not A class. I would give it a solid three or four out of 10. It's not great, but it's not like terrible. I think that's the original bike shop it might have come from. Blossom Cycles and uh, Gates Head maybe. Um, yeah, it's not terrible in any way, but it's also not great either. It's not like a concourse spec version, and I don't think it will ever be. So I'm a bit, uh, a bit not sure what to do with it to be honest. If I'm going to continue with this build, or just park it and just use the bits for something else. So let me know in the comments what you'd do, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.